everyone, I'm Brad Knight Squad Maki. Today's episode will contain spoilers from the movie Gundam Seed Freedom. If you want to watch the movie without any prior information, we recommend skipping this. It's been a while since the movie was released in Japan, but the excitement is still very much alive. It's exciting to think that the movie will be released worldwide. Previously, there was an incident where the novel that was given as a bonus with the movie sold out in about two days according to official information, it will be reprinted and distributed again, which is very exciting. It's unclear whether this novel will be translated and distributed in countries other than Japan. In my show, I also discuss the content of the novel. It's a novel that deals with events that happened before the story told in the movie. If you're interested in the content, please check it out. Today, we are going to share some tidbits about the Black Knight Squad Shiva Model Kit that has been released as well as comments from director Mitsuo Fukuda. We also reveal the secret weapon designed to defeat the rising Freedom Gunnam. Please click the subscribe button to start. Let's make Hiro Yamato fall into darkness with me. First, regarding the equipment of the Black Knight Squad's Shiver, no detailed information has been released about the Femtotech armor. However, the official English spelling was revealed to be Femto Technology. For more detailed content, we may have to wait for the release of a daily collection similar to the Mechanic and World that was released in the past. Femto Technology Armor is known for its ability to neutralize beam weapons. It is often compared to Akatsuki's Yotono Kagami which absorbs and reflects the enemy's beams. At first glance, Yotono Kagami may seem superior. However, it has the disadvantage of requiring the manufacturing cost of more than 20 M, one asterisk just to produce the armor parts. Considering the need for spare parts for repairs, the cost becomes extremely high. In contrast, Several Black Knight Squad units appear in the movie. They may be more cost-effective compared to Yotono Kagami. The name of the weapons of the Black Knight Squad's Shiver has been revealed. The first is a sword with a distinctive shape called Buiig 3M Cross Combat Anti Armor Sword, this pile. It belongs to the category of heat swords capable of destroying mobile suit armor with its high heat and sharpness. The name for the three beam savers is OWCM 502 Beam Saver. They do not have a special name, like the Lacquer the Beam Saver. They can be linked together to form a weapon similar to an ambidextrous halberd. The name for the connected state has not been revealed. The weapon attached to the leg is called OWC 2800 F-Beam Sword. In the Gundam series, souls with wider braids and higher power than beam sabers are often called beam souls. However, no explanation has been given as to why this weapon is called a beam sword. The name of the shield is OTSE. 3M Lock Shield, Smog. This shield also has a beam shield function. However, the beam shield part does not seem to be included in the model kit. It looks like you have to borrow it from another model kit. In the movie, it's used to defend against missiles fired by Athran Sugok. Finally, the weapon fired from the chest is called the Bully IGM. 70C Cross Range Short Needle Projection System. This weapon is designed to destroy phase shift armor by firing a large number of needles. It can only be fired once per battle. The Black Knight Squad Shiva is equipped with many powerful beam weapons capable of defeating Gangnams with phase shift armor. No explanation was given as to why this weapon was included. 
Perhaps there is an advantage to having a weapon with a limited number of uses. Repeatedly hitting face shift armor to cause energy drain is a tactic used by Andrew Waldfeld. Also, applying beam coding to physical weapons to penetrate beam shields is a tactic used by Guy Murakumo in the Astray series. Perhaps the needles being fired or specially treated with beam coding or similar technology. Director Mitsuo Fukuda has released comments in an interview with Animage Plus talking about the memories of making the story of the movie. This movie was greatly influenced by the fact that the screenwriter Chiaki Morosawa passed away. Although she had completed the overall concept of the story, there are many parts that we added. There are also many parts written by Yugoto, who worked on the novel version of the Seed series. There are parts where I came up with the dialogue myself. I think there are fans who will feel that this Seed series is different from the past. There was also concern about whether those parts would be accepted. As the story progressed towards the second half, I realized that it was becoming more in line with my style. On the set, I felt that now, there is no one to stop me. We produced it according to Morosawa's planned concept, so I think the story will not fall apart. However, I realized how a single line of dialogue can change the impression of an actor's performance and the atmosphere of the work. In the past, when we were thinking about the story for the movie, I suggested a plot where Strike Freedom would be defeated in the middle and a new mobile suit would appear. But Morosawa said, that's not cool. She suggested that the victory at the end should come with an older model of the mobile suit. Her suggestion is reflected in the finished movie. The theme of love adopted in the movie was emphasized more than in the previous planning stages. Miss Morosawa used to say that she couldn't quite understand romance films. I also believe that what true love is in essence is unknown. We struggled a lot with how to depict concrete love. Eventually, we arrived at the same do you need qualifications to love? What is the value of being loved? We express the elements of qualification and value in the climax of the story. We created the scenario to express this theme through different characters. Agnes is one of them. Ophi and his companions are also important elements. However, since they were not central to the story, we added a new setting for Lars. We added the premise that Lars is an occult, making her journey to free herself from the fate of the occult is an important element of the film. I think Lars' choice is an answer to the notion that genes determine everything in society. The parts where Lars directly expresses her feelings were created by me. I think Miss Morosawa would never have let a character say I love you directly out of her mouth. The setting that Lars Klein is on the cold seems to be an addition by director Fukuda at the stage of making the movie. With the new setting introduced in the movie, there are new discoveries to be made about Lars' past actions and words. The scene in the final battle of Seed where Lars gives Kiron ring. And the final scene of the movie, where Lars releases the ring into space. What are your impressions of each? The director also commented on how mobile suits are represented. In today's world, there are actual life-size statues of mobile suits like the Unicorn Gunnam and Freedom Gunnam. There is even a moving Gundam statue in Yokohama, Japan. Fans have a certain understanding of the size and weight of mobile suits. This is a big difference from the past when they were purely imaginary existence. 
Therefore, if the mobile suit seen in the movie appeared to be light, it would feel like a lie to the fans. Especially in the opening battle scenes of the movie, we carefully expressed the sense of weight and mass of the mobile suits. We also considered the theoretical existence of mobile suits. In the world of Seed, there were two major wars. This world should be quite impoverished, both economically and in terms of population. Thus, it would be difficult to mobilize large armies for terrorism or conflict. Reconstruction and industrial development would also require a lot of money. Military spending is likely to decline. Under such circumstances, mobile suits, which can be produced at a lower cost, would be used. This is why so many 105 daggers are used despite the existence of the latest mobile suits, like Windham. The fact that the 105 dagger is not equipped with the striker pack system is also a notable feature. In Sea Destiny, there are several scenes where several 105 daggers are equipped with striker packs. This also seems to indicate that the influence of the Blue Cosmos is weakening. Director Fukuda also commented on the design of the mobile suits in the movie. Originally, Rising Freedom and Immortal Justice were to appear as essentially the same mobile suit with only some parts differing. We asked Kuni Ookawaro, a veteran designer, to design them accordingly. However, the final designs turned out to be completely different Gunnams. But that was interesting. Following the idea that mechas are also characters, the current designs were completed. Many of the designs were completed 18 years before the movie was finished. However, for the 2023 release, minor elements were changed. The Black Knight Squad was to appear in much larger numbers. In addition, there was a design for an enemy that looked like a combination of Big Sam and Zeon from the original Gundam, a concept where the upper and lower parts separate like the destroy Gundam. The appearance of Zuga was also my idea. When I suggested it, Miss Morosawa said that it was too cliché. Thinking about that, we decided to introduce Akka instead. However, Atkai appeared in the Gundam Build Fighter series. An image of Atkai being cute emerged among fans. Under these circumstances, I thought we should avoid the same approach as Build Fighters. So Zugok was introduced. I was surprised that the fans enjoyed Zugok's appearance. I thought to myself did he play that big of a role. I was hesitant about the idea of giving Zugok wings. The dilemma was whether it was appropriate for an amphibious mobile suit to have wings. In the end, we decided that flying close to the water's surface might be acceptable. After that, we came up with the idea if we've gone this far, why not make it fly in space? I have a particular fondness for the scene where Maru Ramius moves into the Battle Command Center of the Battleship Millennium. In many cases, it's common sense to place a Battleship's Command Center at the thickest part of the defensive bulkhead. However, I thought it would be close to command from the highest part of the Battleship. Of course, commanding from an exposed position in space lacks realism. That's why I designed a dome-shaped command center. It was an idea I really wanted to try in this movie. In the movie, there is a scene where the Archangel is defeated and Captain Maruramia's seat is evacuated in such a way that it falls down. In fact, there is a scene in Shao's counterattack where Captain Bright Noah's seat falls down. Maybe elements from Shao's counterattack were used. As a result of many obsessions, 
and adapting to the changes of the times, the movie Gundam Seed Freedom was completed. Paying attention to what the director said and watching the movie can lead to new discoveries. Let's meet again in the next program.